Well, hi everyone. We are back with someone you should know. It's been a little while and you know what? It was worth the wait with some of our very <laughs> favorite people. For sure. We're super excited and honored to introduce to you Mark and Pam yes. Walker. And they came all the way from Spokane, Washington to be with us in our home studio today in Nashville. Um, we also had another event we just did together. Um, Timing was perfect. We look for all kinds of excuses to do stuff with you guys. And so uh, this is a couple we are super excited about you knowing about. And I'm going to cut to the chase and go ahead and tell you, we have published their new book called The Multiplication Factor, 16 Truths About Partnering with God in Business and Life. And you are the first to see it right here. Um, and we were the first to read it, which was an incredible honor. Yeah, we, we were. And let me just jump in right away, Elizabeth, on that. Since you went through this, is this it just reminded me how badly we wanted them to write this book. Yeah. And as we found out the story of how God spoke to him originally and how one thing went to another, They're, he's a successful businessman. They do things together, everything. It's he's the successful businessman, but they're a successful <laughs> business couple. Yeah. And, you know, as opposed to, this is the part I just want to interject real quick, is as opposed to when you hear about business and principles of the kingdom on generosity and um, advancing the kingdom in that way, where you have a good spokesperson, but not necessarily a living epistle. These our living epistles. And so that's why we're excited about presenting them to you. Um, these are people that practiced it and practiced it in such an incredible way. When I heard the story right away, I was like, this has to be, this has to be in a book. This is something that will feed the body of Christ. This will give some, um, some examples, some how to's in, in advancing. And it's yeah, hard to get the right title for, for, um, what we put together, it wasn't, we didn't want anything, or they didn't want anything, nobody wanted anything slick or whatever, but there is, it really is, there's a multiplication factor when you connect to the Lord and his way of doing things. Yeah. But, so we'll, ha we'll hear from you guys in just a second. And we definitely want to hear the story behind the title as well. But I um, want to just go ahead and let you know that you can access this book on our website and on Amazon. Mm -hmm. after February. So depending on when you're watching this, um, in February, it'll be available. It'll be officially launched through Amazon. But meanwhile, we do have it on our bookstore, store7.org. Um, so this is a pre-launch conversation. This yeah. is a pre-launch conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we, we're not a publishing company, although we do have a publishing arm of Restore 7. And we're extremely selective about mm -hmm. what we publish because um, we just need to stay in our lane. This is in our lane, very much in our lane. And um, just super excited to get into this. You want to stick around because Mark and Pam have really um, incredible story to tell and a lot of wisdom that we have learned from mm -hmm. you guys over the years. Mm -hmm. How long have we been friends now? We were just having that conversation, <laughs> trying, to, trying to figure it out. We we're like eight to ten years, I somewhere in there. Yeah. We, we started really connecting about eight to ten years ago. Yeah. We met you like fifteen or yeah, you know, yes. originally right. in Atlanta. Right, right. right. Yes. So let's yeah. start with yeah. with that, and then we'll jump into y'all's story. So about eight or ten years ago, we were pastoring a church. No, that was over ten years. Fifteen years ago, we were pastoring mm -hmm. a church in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And you guys were a very integral part of the healing rooms out of Spokane mm -hmm. with Cal Pierce, who's a dear friend of y'all's. Mm -hmm. And um, and we had a healing rooms through Angela Klein at our church. And so you guys would come. And um, so we knew of each other, but we didn't really have a friendship. And then we ran into each other um, about eight years That's ago. That's what we're saying, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In... Um, when Spoken. we lived in California, we were up at an event at the Healing Rooms, yeah. and you guys were there. Mm -hmm. So we can talk more about that in a bit. But so you wrote a book. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you just birthed a baby. <laughs> so I heard someone ask you, like, how many? How long did this take you to write? Yeah, uh, probably over five years. But really, the last year and a half is when it really took 
a lot of, you know, we really put a lot of effort in, but it, five years, four or five years. Was yeah. Great process. I really enjoyed the process of yeah. just trying to, just spending time with the Lord, hearing what, you know, what part of, mm-hmm. you know, how to write, what to, mm-hmm. what to write. And, yeah. Yeah. So. I, I know that you're an early morning person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we've stayed with y'all in various locations on trips and things. And you'd always be the first awake, working (laughs) on your book and adding in the latest thing that the Lord was speaking to you about. And we know what that's like. It's like there's a moment in your lives where this long journey you've had with the Lord just kind of all converges and you see it laid out in a way that you can put it into Mm -hmm. a where someone can digest it and apply mm-hmm. it to their lives. So mm-hmm. give us background on how you ended up um, mm-hmm. in the position that you're in now, where you can partner with a ministry like ours and other ministries to, to help advance things through. Like the starting point where this finances. all started. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know it started in your heart even before yeah. you and Pam met. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, um, I was in college in, in, I uh, was trying to make a decision of what to do in my life, and I really wanted to do something significant. Actually, I was had a my degree. I was questioning why I picked what I was in taking in college, and I was questioning. I, and all of a sudden, I went to a meeting, and I heard a pastor who was also a businessman. But he's we were in a, a basement with a lot of college kids and some young married couples, and this pastor is looking. Uh, at us, and all of a sudden, he's missing. He's saying God's going to raise up and, and anoint people in business to mm. finance the gospel. Really? And 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 he says, actually, God's going to give people, uh, give you ideas, uh, strategies, solutions in business, and and inventions. And he's saying some of you are going to become CEOs. You know, mm. some of you are going to become, you know, have a, a really important uh, position in a big company. And and he he was just saying, but. And then he was saying, but God is going to, I'm listening. He says, God wants to partner with me in business, that God wanted to anoint me in business. And I, and, and I, it just wasn't even in my mind at the time. Yeah. And all of a sudden I actually felt something come on me. And yeah. I was so excited that that was it. I wanted to, and that's how I could make a difference was to, to finance the gospel. And I, at the time I, I had no money. Uh, you know, I'm in college. I really didn't have an idea, any kind of idea for a business or a strategy. Yeah. I didn't really think I had any kind of special talent, you know, but but I just I, I just I was so excited. I knew at that time that God would partner with me in, in business. And so from that point, I just uh, I, I was so excited. I just started to to press into um, our our relationship uh, with God and his promises that, you know, he promised Abraham to bless, uh, bless you to become a blessing. And I started reading a lot of scriptures on, on prosperity and and, and how God wants, wants to bless and multiply people, you know, to, to be a blessing, to, to help make a difference, to, to be salt and light. Your testimony, Mark, and what I why I really wanted to get behind it, and I've written a forward and a conclusion for it, is because uh, the story, Mark's story, is like it's not like he had an inheritance, wondering what I should do with it. He had a great job. What should I do with my income? No, no job, no income, no anything. No wife. I didn't have a <laughs> wife. <laughs> I, think, I think that comes later. That that's even part of the attraction. She wasn't going to fall for him until she heard this big vision. It's like. I could be a good husband, um, um, not just for for them. But anyway, I'm jumping ahead on that. But here's uh, framing this conversation is that there is, uh, you know, he hears a pastor lay out a vision that was unusual. It, for those of you who've heard the Seven Mount message, that's not so uh, unusual anymore. The idea you can serve God somewhere else other than in church. But it's like, what? This can be a, a ministry thing. This can be a holy thing. This can be a kingdom thing. And something jumps in him and says, I want to make resources. I want to make money to advance the kingdom of God before anything else. And I think we point that out because some of you out there, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe pay attention. If you're younger, you really want to pay attention to something that just sparks in your heart. You hear a message. Faith comes up out of nowhere. And just like, there's no reason, um, no reason to believe other than the faith spark in you that you should go with it. But um, also just to tell 
uh, we were probably going to get there eventually, Elizabeth, but I'm jumping ahead on this, is that Mark and Pam, uh, eventually you got up to 14 furniture stores. Speaking of multiplication factor, the stores multiply and it, it is all uh, line upon line. We'll get into some of this, but of course, that's what that what the book is for. Mm-hmm. And and telling a story, we don't. I don't even ask them if it's okay to tell. But they've given millions uh, in, to advance the kingdom of God around the world for decades. And so this is this is true and tried. They're living epistles of what's possible when you invite God into the into the process of it all. So I just think this is an amazing story here. It is, and I mean the the success that you guys have experienced is mm-hmm. is success in its truest sense because mm-hmm. it's success for the kingdom it's success in that you became a team um it's been success in terms of um you didn't just accomplish certain things you've learned enough along the way to be able to help others understand mm-hmm how to be a part of of advancing the kingdom through their finances and their business and entrepreneurs. And I mean, even if you're not in business and you're got a set salary or whatever, you are going to learn some incredible principles that are, um, they're in the scripture, but the way that Mark unpacks them is so powerful. So Pam, share with us a little bit about (laughs) the original, you know, you eventually met Mark mm-hmm. and heard this. I know that was a part of, of y'all's story of you finding out kind of his yeah. his mentality I at, about I finances. was at that same meeting. Oh, you were? We we didn't even know each other. Yeah. I missed yeah. that part. Yeah, wow. we were. And so I heard that and that was really interesting, but I didn't know that it impacted him that way. Until um, later. Until right? later when we got to um, and he asked me out. I don't know. Was it a year later? It was a while ago. We were yeah. going to the same church, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So, and it was just interesting how um, we dated for a while, and um, and, and and then he, um, he actually expressed his his um, love for me quite early in our dating. <laughs> and so it was I, a little earlier than you were ready to hear. And, right? Yes. And so, you know, I, I said, well, I'm not sure I'm right there yet, but we need to just, let's see where it goes. And then he started ignoring me. <laughs> and come to find out, he just said, it was, it was too distracting from being a student. So we just didn't talk to each other much then for about a year, but then um, the God through um, a change of heart, you know, just through circumstances of, Growing in the Lord and trusting Him and uh, feeling a freedom to, you know, maybe, um, you know, we, anyway, we ended up starting to date again. Was we I right? When I... Long, we spent time together as singles in a single yeah. week mm-hmm. at, uh, after Christmas and um, did a lot of activities. Was, was I right about like this part? Was I right about this part where that at some point you're asking him, so what are you going to do? Right. Like part of your yes. thinking and processing yes. early on is like, so what are you going to do in life? Right. And then he tells that to you. Yeah. And what did you tell me? <laughs> yeah, we, we were at a very romantic, you know, we, we had just spent the night skiing and, and she asked me, well, what are you going to do with your life? And I, I, I said, well, I'm going to, you know, start a business and make a lot of money to support the gospel. I want to support the gospel in a big way. And she kind of looked at me and she, kind of, she got she got all excited about that, which really was a confirmation to me because she was excited about starting a business because it's risky. It's pretty unusual to start a business and then just to give the money away. I really wanted to give a lot of money away. And I, I told her that, but she... She was right on, right? Yeah. You found that appealing, right? Oh, I was a giver anyway. I yeah. love giving. I it was in my DNA. Yeah. And so that I thought, whoa, yes, it sounds like a, yeah. an awesome thing. So when was the first time that um you had an opportunity to be generous towards the gospel? Um or towards oh, I, anything like giving out this of part. I love yeah. this. I love mm-hmm. it. Well, you see, and that's what so I was I was so excited. I, I walked out of that meeting and I just had a lot of faith that somehow God was, I had no money, but God was going to start blessing me at some point or, and even show me what kind of business to start. And, and so that year I was a junior in college, but about six months later, my, I got a check in the mail and it was $5,000 and but it was wow. from my grandfather and he, but he had never sent money uh, to me before. That was the first time. And I, right away, I opened up and I just knew right away, uh, God, 
it had nudged him to do that, that that God had prompted him to send me a check and he didn't send it to my brothers or my sisters. So, wow. you know, I, I just, I was so excited. I knew God had blessed me in, in that it was, it, here's my opportunity. God yeah. was blessing me. I had an opportunity to then just to give it away. And I was so excited that it was, it had started that God was fulfilling what he had told me, you know, six <laughs> months before that God was going to give me the power to get well. Actually, that was the scripture used was Deuteronomy 8.18, yeah. that God was going to give me the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant. Mm-hmm. To, and, and I walked away. So my part of that promise was that to, to bless, you know, so I, I just was excited to give the money to our church. And, okay, and then, so let's make sure that was clear. You gave the entirety. Of, right. You didn't tithe on it. You didn't double tithe on it. You didn't get 50%. You just the five thousand came in. You turned yeah. it. Like how many of us would do that no, at our age? That's, that's, <laughs> but uh, especially as a college student who didn't have anything. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it was extra money. So it was. I just saw it as a, a God's blessing, and I just said, I just was excited to give it. Away. I mean, imagine the heart of the father when he saw you from such a young age respond with that level mm-hmm. of trust in him and generosity and, and what you felt like was obedience mm-hmm. to a call that's on your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there was another situation was, soon after that, but I actually, think it was after y'all got married, I, right? I, well, I really believe we entered into a cycle of blessing because actually uh, a year after that, I got mm-hmm. another check from my grandfather, another 10. We gave that, I gave that it away. It was 10,000. 10,000. And so that, you know, doubling. And then, and then after that, that's when I, we met, you know, well, we had met, but we started dating and making decisions we together. So we're, all of a sudden yeah. we're married. So God supernaturally brought us back together and, yeah. and blessed, you know, me with an amazing wife. So, Definitely. And, and then the first year of our marriage, you know, we, uh, after one year of marriage, we said, God put on my heart to buy a house. And so course, you get that. I have to interrupt you, Mark. So you just get that. He didn't have a house. He didn't have a house. He gives his first five thousand away. He gives his first ten thousand away, and you could say that's back when five thousand and ten thousand was really five and ten thousand. Yeah. Right. That's okay. A down payment on a house. So, it was so a now down you need, could have bought a house. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And so now you're getting married and you need a house. Okay. Right. And so you know, and I, you know, I'm saying, well, God, I, we didn't have any money to put a down payment on it, on yeah. the house. So we, but we went out, we were by faith, we were looking and we found a house that was, had a, a sign by owner and it was, you know, uh, $39,000 and, you know, which, you know, and I, was, and I say a sign, I said, well, God prompted me that if I just went up and knocked on the door and said, and said, hey, if you raise the price, it was 38000 if you raise the price up to $39,000, we'll be able to use that thousand dollars for a down payment but and we have great credit and you know no you'll yeah. you'll get the price you wanted and you know it's right. a win-win. It'll work for you. and and uh, amazing enough the guy accepted it we bought the house a, a, a month later we're in the house we're all excited and 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 you know a year later after that all of a sudden it, we, god put it in our heart to sell and we sell it we made thirteen thousand dollars which was amazing, right? You know, again, I'm saying, God, you know, you gave us this house and, yeah. and we're all excited. And we actually uh, found another house in a beautiful uh, development. It yeah. had we were building 14 houses and we put $500 down on that house. And then we're thinking, you know, so we're all excited. And, and in, in the next month, I'm praying about, okay, God, what do I do with this money? We just made $13,000. Now, you know, we, and we're married. I'm thinking we could buy, she had an old car. I was thinking of different things we were, mm-hmm. we were doing. And all of a sudden uh, it came to me. I said, I, I should give this money away. God, <laughs> you know, that's what was my, kept agreeing with you. <laughs> well, yeah. And that, well, at that point, I think it was, well, I better ask her. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> when I'm the one that needed the car. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, we, you know, we, and we were thinking about having children and we were just thinking, you know, so, and I, but when I asked her, she, she was all in. She said, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I wasn't we, like kind of, when you mentioned it, I think I, I said, you know, the thought had crossed my mind or it wasn't surprising or yeah, she, I it just made sense. And I yeah. have to just wow. jump in and say, cause yeah. this is the lessons to be extracted. We're talking about such major kingdom points here. Um, with what we're, we're sharing with you. Cause there's the way the Lord tests the heart. You can see. 
I, as a pastor and been in the body of Christ a long time, the people who've said they want to uh, make money and give to the body of Christ, I've actually heard it a lot. But there's this thing, we're going to wait until God, this is what we want to do. So we're hoping we're just like people even said, I, I'm, I bought lottery tickets because God's mm -hmm. going to uh, do it. But there's this thing, you know, mm -hmm. do not despise a day of small things. And he really sees your heart and your intent with the small things. Mm -hmm. And so I can't tell you how huge it is that um, the 5,000 and then the 10,000 to give it all up front. Did you even have a car on? I had a car. You had a car yes. that they didn't have a house. Didn't have a yeah. No, they, they're going to be getting married and he's giving all, all that away. There's a little bit of ruthless extravagance uh, with, with God there. And then what they're talking about the house here, I'm just telling you, I haven't heard this. Why I wanted their story as an epistle because I haven't heard that kind of story um, very often. And so we get to see, how the Lord then began. But the deal about both this book and their life is it's just one after another, after another of this kind of process with the Lord. And so it eventually goes to where we've told you kind of this big end game of 14 furniture but stores. How, yeah. How did you get involved? Well, in see, but the rest store. of that story is really the exciting part of that story is we, we thought we were going to, now we put that $500 down in the house. We thought we were going to maybe have to walk away from that because we needed $4,000 <laughs> to, to finance that house. And so, but a month later, a lady called and all of a sudden it says, oh, your house is, it won't be done in four months. It's going to take six months. Mm. It's going to take longer. So I'm, as I'm hanging up, all of a sudden I heard a, a nudge from Lord, you know, you, you can still buy this house. All we have to do is come up with that. Four thousand dollars. So that's <laughs> all. So, so, but the extra time we we God gave me a strategy. We came up with the money, and amazingly enough, when we we uh, signed on that house, the day we're signing in the house, we're moving into our house. It's a brand new development, and they. But in the front of that development, they had a billboard saying the house was, you know, originally was was um, fifty three or uh, no fifty nine thousand dollars. $59,000. And, but the day we, after we signed it, we we're moving into the house. All of a sudden they changed that billboard and our, the same house we had just bought for 59,000 was now selling for 73,000. So the $13,000 that we had given away was already you know, equity wait, in the house. Yeah, now. Equity in the house. Yeah, so, 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 so we, you know, I didn't know that, but we were so ecstatic. God was being so faithful. Yeah. You know, he, we were doing our part, but he was so doing his part. He was yeah. blessing us. We were so, and then that's a house that we sold mm -hmm. a year and a half later. Is that's really when we all of a sudden God told me what kind of business to start, to start a furniture store yeah. and, and, and in Spokane. And, and so it just, it just was, we sold One that thing. house. That's where, where we started our business from. And so. Well, yeah, just that in case you, you miss it, those of you, you know, you look at neighborhoods, houses from. <laughs> and so houses were from 59,000 when they bought it. And the next, they signed it. The next day it's houses from 73,000. That means their house has just jumped in 24 hours from the time they signed in value uh, uh, the fourteen thousand dollars. Anyway, that's that's another one of those uh, yeah, uh, um, amazing uh, stories in the process well, of the Lord. And and what did you get to the, the the first furniture store? What was the seed for that? What what? How did you fund that very first well, one from the house? From we, the house, we, we we took that money and we actually we opened one of the smallest. It probably <laughs> on record one of the smallest. It was unfinished furniture stores. It was only two thousand square feet. It was smaller than the house we sold. Uh, the, you know the square footage, and but but God was so faithful. Uh, um, you know we started yeah. together, and her and I, and yeah. and, and uh, nice. the first month we actually made a profit. God sh gave me strategies on uh, on you know how we found a great. He gave us a great location and. And so many things happened to, to, to yeah. just the His time, favor. We just favor. Actually, there was another unfinished furniture store in the town, and they actually 
um, decided to close a, have a going out of business sales. So our second and third month, all of a sudden a bunch of people, they're advertising, but they ran out of uh, solid oak. And a lot of people are coming into our store from their, from their advertising. So God, the just, timing yeah. that he set up, the timing that there's a lot of, a lot of things that just favor uh, that would come favor. in ways that you couldn't have planned. Right. God exactly. just kept working on your behalf. Yeah. What's one of your, favorite things about the book and how Mark laid it out and the stories that he tells in yeah. it. It's one of your favorite things. Well, I, what I like about it is not only, it, he really illustrates how God um, talked to him through mm-hmm. every step of the process and the way he waited on the Lord, the way he prayed, the way he didn't give up from the time that, that I anointing or that, Mm-hmm. Mantle dropped on him to mm-hmm. be a, um, a financier of whatever God wanted to do kingdom in the world. Ministry, kingdom yeah. ministry, right? Um, to the point where he actually finally opened the store. It took. It didn't just happen overnight. Yeah. But we were married. I think it was at least five, six years from the time that happened to the time that he go. That he tried. Several, in fact, he tried um, um, one year. And working in the field that he graduated in, and it, he realized that wasn't going to make enough. <laughs> and then he tried another field, and that he just wasn't his personality. He knew that wasn't going to work. He couldn't do that. And so, finally, just working at a regular job that somebody offered him in, in um, it was in furniture, and he had no clue that was what the that answer. would grow into. Yeah. And so he worked there faithfully. Mm. Uh, was it two years? Year and a half. Mm. For about a year and a half. Uh, when he, all of a sudden he realizes that Spokane, the city he grew up in, didn't have a store like that. Uh, yeah. And it's like, it was like a light bulb went on. And so, but it took years before he realized and he didn't give up. He didn't give up. Yeah. So, awesome. and, and, and it was things like that throughout the book that yeah. problems that would come up and how God would give him ideas yeah. and solutions to things. And he, I, I just got to the point where I knew that. Yeah. Between he and God, they could. I, I wasn't concerned at all. Yeah. <laughs> but wasn't it fun to see it on it paper, really though? Fun, fun to oh, see it on paper. Really fun to see it. So on one of the things I've mm-hmm. I've seen is just uh, how it's not easy to steward a testimony. Sometimes you have yeah. to go back, and you're just like, well, God was involved. Well, how was he? Which is what's so good about you having spent mm-hmm. so much time, and it comes out in sixteen clear truths about partnering with God. Mm-hmm. Is cause there's something about learning? Okay, what was the key there? What did it? Because yes. you know it's general favor. And then out of out of knowing those those specific truths and how they guided you, and you're like, you know what? What I did discover at that time mm. is is that was really key. And then you're giving that, as it were, as a golden key to other people who would be uh, reading this. And so that's what, speaking of that, I see you already have the book ready. You ready to read something to somebody on this? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I, um, one of the aspects of God that I mm-hmm. see in you both individually, but also as a couple, um, is you really reflect how God is so intentional. Mm-hmm. And I think when we, when we meet God, like he, God's relational, he's all about intimacy. And just like in any relationship, when you meet somebody back with what they're offering, what, what comes out of it is, is so incredible. And God was so intentional with you guys, like you're saying with the testing and all of that, Mm -hmm. but you've been so intentional back with him, Mm -hmm. not just intentional in the ways we've already talked about, but intentional, like journaling all those Mm. years and Mm. being faithful to go back to scripture and find scripture when you were being challenged and things were not easy, Mm. you know, test after test after test, like real life tests with family, with business, with, um, you know, the market going up and down, like all the different factors that, that Mm. affect us, you, you would find a scripture and go back to it. I mean, even to this day, I know you keep a journal and you write and you, you pray over very specific things in an intentional way. And, and so when it came time to put this story into a book where you could um, allow it to benefit others that are hungry to partner with God, um, you have that to pull from and, 
e each chapter starts yeah, with a promise. Each chapter starts with a promise and ends with a promise that really impacted my life. That mm -hmm. helped me build, you know, ha the faith to have the faith to build and to grow our business. You know, because we went from one store, actually we opened our second store within the first year. Mm -hmm. So we just, we we're just, you know, I, I grabbed the hold of these promises and uh, that God was going to partner with me. That actually, yes. that what I believe is a multiplication factor is partnering with God and his promises to fulfill your purpose. So that's uh, good. That's, you know, it just, and that's, so the, the promises all through the, our book is just really uh, so impacted my life and kept, and I kept going back as I was journaling. That's where it was easy to kind of, I saw it keep moments in my life where I would go back to uh, grab a hold of a, a promise and just hold on to it. And sometimes, you know, but, you know, you have so many different times when that just makes a difference. You trust the Lord that he's He's yeah. going to direct your steps. You, you know, uh, there's so many great scriptures, yeah. you know. Well, and so that. many people are eager to find a promise of God, like prophetically. Like, mm -hmm. I got this prophecy that says I'm going to be this or that. And they bypass the principles that God himself put into motion and explained to us in scripture. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that. You took, yeah. you both took scripture that that it clearly are promises that mm -hmm. usually have a piece we're supposed to yeah. commit to, and then he will this back with us. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. it's scripture, so it's not like they got some pro they get prophecies all the time after the fact, but before they had prophetic words from anyone saying you're going to mm -hmm. do this or do that from scripture, they knew how to partner with God from the from the promises that are in there. And so the promises that Mark has in the book are for all of us. Right, right. And um, I like how you end each chapter with a, a quote with scripture, but also with questions to consider. Mm. And so this would make a really great devotional book. Um, I mean, for yourself or someone else in your family or friend, um, because it leaves you with kind of something to meditate on and and you could even journal the answers to the questions yourself it's it's nothing like heavy but just enough like i just want to read to you yeah. one um this is from the end of chapter seven and in chapter seven is where you talk about um let me find the title of it god will answer us god will answer us when we ask for his grace and favor for our assignment you know so many people um, they confuse God's love for them with his favor for them. So when the favor comes and goes, they, they have a crisis of identity because they don't feel loved by God. But you understood that um, his favor was actually not proof that he loved you because he always loves you even when the favor's not there. But the favor's there for a reason. It's to fulfill an assignment. Mm -hmm. So this whole chapter is um, goes into that, but then at the end, the questions questions to consider. You said it feels funny reading you your own book. <laughs> What's your you're, 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 you're not reading it for them? Yeah. Yeah, I think we have an audience here too. So. Do you believe God cares about every aspect of your life and business? You know, and if you're not in business, you could apply this to whatever area of calling you have, whatever mm -hmm. area yeah. of culture you're called to. Do you believe that God cares about every aspect of your life and your business? Do you recognize that because he cares, he has the better ways and plans for the practical steps you need to take and that he's willing to share them with you as you learn to lean in and listen for his directions? Commit today to consistently make time to hear his input as you make important decisions. And then you quote John 10, 3, to him, the shepherd, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. What you read over and over again is a couple who consistently choose to believe that God is speaking to them and and they they lean in to recognize the ways that he's speaking and and they don't hear you know like they don't hear any differently from the lord right. than Johnny and I do there's no um 
I don't, I don't think you've or... ever heard the audible voice of God or anything like that. It's <laughs> like leaning in and learning to recognize, oh, he's speaking to yeah. me right now. And this is how he speaks yeah. to me. And and so you're going to get such practical examples of, of what that looks like and sounds like in someone's life who has landed in a place of years and years of trial and error of hearing mm-hmm. God's voice, attempting to obey, not always getting it perfect. Mm-hmm. And and the end result, one of the end results is being used powerfully by the Lord. Like literally, I mean, I'm just going to be a little vulnerable here, but we wouldn't be sitting in a home studio right now having something to film on without their the choices that they made through their lifetime, the That's partnership right. that they chose to have with Johnny and I and with Restore 7 financially in such a practical way, you wouldn't be hearing about most of the things that we talk yeah. about in the studio. That's so right. And the timing of when we connected and when their hearts were moved, even to then, okay, this is kingdom we want to sow into as well, has been uh, huge, huge for us. Mm-hmm. But I want to uh, you got add, to read? Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> and really, you'll, you just, you probably just picked it up in a little bit Elizabeth is reading, but there's such. As Bob Jones, most of you don't know Bob Jones, the wind of this, the wind of the spirit. <laughs> really he would say, "You feel the wind on that." <laughs> so, but so he starts with a statement like a promise. And this is from uh, chapter fourteen. He, you know, calls it truth fourteen. God is looking for people who will allow His generosity to flow through them, and that's so simple and actually so profound. I need to say that one more time. God is looking for people who will, uh, will allow. His generosity to flow through them. And I just have to stop for a moment there again. I, I'm used to Christians saying, if he does this, I'm going to do this. Right. If I win the lottery, if I get the million, if I get the big upgrade, if I get that job, I, I'm going to be generous eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yet <clears throat> it's not happened already. And so that's, uh, you know, it kind of discredits the process there. But the call ultimately is is to be a channel versus being a dam, a dam of resources. Uh, and so this thing of he was proven and Mark and Pam were proven, particularly Mark in the real early days. Again, get to 5,000. Yes, this is God allowing me to step into being a channel of, of wealth. But uh, I was going to read. So he then uh, quotes the scripture. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. See, he didn't get like an order from God, give all your money or you'll never have. It. It's like his heart was moved. Mark's heart was moved to give the first five, first 10, even to keep doing the faith steps as it related to uh, the house that they were going to get and the order of, of, of things that they did. And so, um, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful Giver, have you gotten joy out of this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> it's a bit amazing. <laughs> so, uh, okay, here's the chapter. After being in business for 25 years, again, this is Mark and Pam's, uh, we could clearly see God's hand on our business. Our sales increased between 10 and 30% almost every year. You like that ROI? And we were able to handle the growth. And we were able to handle the growth. Uh, the few years... Our sales did not grow. Our profits still grew because we were able to become more efficient and keep our expenses in line. Year after year, because of God's blessing, we were able to give our employees yearly raises and in most months, generous bonuses. A point there. Again, you have a business and they're not just like, okay, we're going to do this on the back of the employees. We're doing this for the kingdom, for God. So, hey, listen, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay you very much and all that. No. Do you see how important right up front year after year, really early on in the process for them, we were able to give our employees yearly raises and in most most months, generous bonuses. So this, this is all kingdom stuff, kingdom stuff, keys, golden keys to how you begin to prosper and how you begin to partner with God in business and in life because he, he, he has enough prosperity god does Mm -hmm. where he can like win 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 for the employees Mm -hmm. uh win for the kingdom win for them and so this is great okay let me uh i was also excited because god blessed our real estate purchases that we own separately from our company 
They were bringing in a steady income. Our rental income coupled with our company success gave us the ability to give substantially to God's kingdom. Uh, you see just even what comes out of Mark always, we were able to give substantially to God's kingdom. He's not rejoicing on the bank account. That happens mm -hmm. uh, too, but there's this, this uh, ongoing theme you see with uh, Mark and Pam. In our opening month, we cheerfully gave around 20 to 30% of our personal income, although that wasn't very much at first. 20 to 30% of their personal income. Early on, early on. That's early on. Yeah, that's when you need it the most. <laughs> yeah, when they're doing the startups. <laughs> when you feel it the most. Our, our giving was a priority. Not our making was a priority. Our giving was a priority. There's just so much truth and golden keys are given just in this interaction mm -hmm. conversation, but this thing is loaded with it. Our giving was a priority and it served as our primary motivation. It served as our primary motivation to grow our business when opportunities came our way. Do you hear that? It served as our primary motivation to grow our business when opportunities came. So there's an opportunity that's like, hey, this is a really good deal on this uh, new property and you could have another store easily. Primary motivation, we could give more. So I'm just like, <laughs> that's what it was, right? You saw that, <laughs> you, you know that. I know that. We continued giving similar percentages of our personal income joyfully and cheerfully as the Lord led us each year. Okay, let me do one paragraph here and jump in on anything that needs to be. Giving so blessed Pam and me that it became a lifestyle and it rarely felt like a necessity or obligation. We experienced the promise of a 2 Corinthians 9 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. I began meditating on this and confessing it all the time. You want to say something about that? I mean, just to meditate on that possibility and confessing it all the time. <laughs> just your words. I mean, you can't already say it another way. But well, you know, in business, so many times things come up, uh, problems, uh, difficult situations, and, and I would just confess God, you know, we're in this together and there you I just go. thank you for your grace. You know, I just uh, ask for your grace at this time. I mean, you know, you, there's things you are in front of you and you don't really know right then and there what the solution is, but you're asking for his grace mm -hmm. to give you a solution, to give you, you know, and sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it takes a year, but, it, but he was so, always so faithful as you just would lean in and know that you're in this together and that, you know, you you could solve these things. You could together, you, you know. Imagine the confidence that's that you say, would yeah. feel. I mean, you don't have to imagine it because y'all <laughs> lift it. But yeah. the confidence that you feel, um, and we feel this way ministry-wise. It's like you're, you're so all in right. that you don't, it's not like you're asking God for a little tip or a little favor. Because like, you know, he knows I'm all in. So right. if this goes under or doesn't do well mm -hmm. um it's gonna it's gonna affect you too because we're we both are focused on the same end result we want to see the kingdom god's kingdom mm -hmm. advance so mm -hmm. well and specifically i think is this this word faith so you have initial faith and so you uh, but there's something that when you have real tests and then he's seen you through it mm -hmm. he's he's pulled you through you get about 11 of those down. You're like, you know, this is, this looks pretty bad right now, <laughs> but I am pretty certain he's going to pull us through this one. He keeps coming through. He keeps yeah. coming through. And so you, your confidence is, is built not on whatever, how many z zeros you have in some account somewhere, but it's like, you know what? He has always pulled us through. You've had that all the way to the COVID years, face mm -hmm. tests and challenges all over again. So it's like, Okay, Lord, what's the solution? What's the answer? What do yeah. what do we do? And nobody's saying it's easy. It's still, but what makes anything manageable is just part right. partnering with God. Like, don't forget uh, that aspect of it. Okay, let's see if I finish uh, reading that. I reminded God that we were in this business together, and I desperately needed Him to partner with me to do the impossible. I enjoyed giving and was always on the lookout for ministries that were impacting the world as well as our city. So that's a, just a key part is looking for the good kingdom soil, uh, not really for the good returns, but that's just what the Lord does. It's like, well, if, you, if you'll do the vetting and find good kingdom soil, 
then I, I'm going to increase how I bless you back even more. Pam, maybe you could share just a little bit about um, how we ended up in more of a kingdom partnership and, and advancing God's kingdom in some ways together. Okay. Well, what I remember is that um, we went to that conference that you came, we came to Spokane, and we'd known you from the past because of healing rooms, and so we were acquaintances. I wouldn't say we were close friends or anything, right. but, but um, we saw and heard your vision for the Seven Mountains more clearly. It's you know, I had books like Mark was saying. And so we had a heart at the time. We, you know, having children, they were growing up and becoming young adults. And we had a heart for that generation mm. to get to know God. Like mm. we had a chance to know God um, through uh, just a closer relationship mm -hmm. and trust. And so, but I think that sometimes that generation just hasn't exper had experienced it like that. Not yeah. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see advance more. So we um, approached you and talked to you about ways that we could mm -hmm. help or whatever we could do or, you know, and so I think that that's what it started with and it just kind of snowballed from there. And yeah. um, I feel like um, when I heard the Seven Mountain message and how God wanted to impact the whole world through every sphere of it, yeah. society, you know, the arts and entertainment, the you know, education, everything. You can name them better yeah. than I can. Just, um, it, what, it's just, it just rang so true to us yeah. that we um, we were so excited to yeah. be a part of, of, of helping in any way we could. To be part and to help yeah. the ministry that's really impacting cities and nations yeah. and, and so many people and, 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 you know, just advancing the kingdom. It's mm -hmm. a, it, That's we we wanted to be part of somehow to, to help especially financially and, and just uh and just to encourage you to keep yeah. you know and it did yeah. yeah we i don't think up to that point i don't think we'd ever had um anyone we had we had monthly donors and people that were were giving very generously to restore seven but we'd never had anyone come and say, um, like, what, what's in your heart to do and how can we impact the next generation together? Mm -hmm. And it, it set us on a, on a, a, I feel like is a friendship where we were mm -hmm. able to begin dreaming with God mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll just say from someone who's in ministry versus in, in business in the typical way, because they're obviously ministering and yes. in ministry. Um, but we're the more traditional sense in, in that this is what we do full time. Um, there's a responsibility, I believe, that we have to have at minimum within ourselves and within, mm -hmm. you know, our conversations is we're 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 stewarding um, us and our board. We're stewarding kingdom finances that come through Restore 7. And it's it's a it's a weightiness in a good way and an important way that you have to understand someone who sent, you know, sometimes we'll get, you know, letters in the mail that have a $5 bill in it. And you know, like this is yeah. somebody that, that lives paycheck to paycheck and they don't have much. And that $5 was sacrificially given. And when we open that, it's with, it's with so much fear and trembling, like, Lord, what that person went through to get to that moment to be able to give like that mm -hmm. is you've entrusted us with something huge. And we feel, of course, the same way with you guys, like, mm -hmm. and the others that have come alongside mm -hmm. and made decisions in their personal relationship with God in their marriage and their families that have positioned them to be able to sow into the kingdom. And it mm -hmm. is a great way and a, a, a place of stewardship and responsibility. But we were also excited because you're fun and cool people to be with. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah. more than just a kingdom partnership, like a friendship began where, where we could really, um, like we wanted them on our board. We wanted them helping steer the direction of Restore 7 and of the finances that are entrusted to us. Like what, asking the Lord together, where are we going with this for our, 
our piece that we're responsible for impacting the kingdom. And so I hope that's been fun for y'all because I know there's a lot of places that you've given where, you know, you've just given and, and in a, in a good sense, you, you let go. There's not a sense of control. We never felt pressure from you guys. We never feel pressure from you guys on anything that is, is given your time that's given your wisdom that's given your finances that are given. We feel you giving it and stepping away but we also hope that y'all have enjoyed being uh, well, involved in helping sure. steer some of that. Well, it's just fun to see the results of, of all the lives that have been being impacted and all the different, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just exciting to see what God's doing. And the and wisdom me, that y'all have yeah. offered along the way has been incredibly helpful too. Yeah. As yeah. business people, yeah. it gives us the freedom to not have to have a, real strong business mentality and lean on y'all and others that the Lord has put around us to make some of those decisions that, um, you know, Yeah, let me speak into that just a yeah, moment because the relationship between, um, you know, kingdom givers primarily known for giving mm-hmm. and kingdom primarily known for ministry speaking or whatever we say primarily because we just, um, what we just came from early this morning is where Pam, and Mark this morning, last night, helping us pray and prophesy over high level uh, government people for Central and South America, people who uh, have been in and out of the presidential level and could be there in the, in the future. And so it's awesome. They, they have the gifting in that area, pray, prophesy, hear God in that, in that kind of way. But the partnership, and I think this is something for those listening, um, you know, I think uh, perhaps Pam and, and uh, Mark and Pam have experienced often the way it is when you're giving. It's just sort of like those who receive just sort of want there to be a distance. Thank you for your money. We're here. But there is a there is a there is a real kingdom. Well, I'm just going to say there's a kingdom fun and, and when there's oh, a kingdom yeah. com- camaraderie. Yeah. Yes. When it's like like we wanted we want him to have a successful uh book out there's like your your story your own story needs to be there for your own sake for your family legacy, legacy yeah. but for but for the for the body of christ so there's a point where yeah. you you're looking out for each other it's it's win-win it's like no not like and well, that's we, the culture of the kingdom that's the culture of the kingdom not just yeah we would like you know, to know pam and uh, mark and pam because you know we can get some resources that way it's like no we're you know we have uh a little bit more of some strength. They have more of another strength, but we put these things together and we're really enjoying. Uh, we have a lot of conversations about the things we're advancing. We have uh, uh, we have the Rise app. It's really, a, you know, several years ago, Mark said, well, that's part of this initial, con- really, yeah. it, the, the Rise app came out of y'all that first mm-hmm. time saying, yeah. we want the part of this advancing to the next generation. And so like, we want to help make that thing uh, happen. And we have a documentary that we're, uh, it's going to be an amazing thing that's they're about to be released. They're executive producers. They're executive producers, but they're like, we want to get behind that. So yeah. they get a, it's fun it's and enjoyable, I think y'all would say, to be able yeah. to say, we're going to get behind. And then to watch it come to fruition yeah. and know you had a part. There's such a joy in doing this kingdom in a kingdom camaraderie way is what I'm trying to say. And and you can see we're not putting words in their mouth. We really enjoy doing this stuff together. So that's another sure. part of the story. So, um, you know, I want to, I think we should hear from both of you at least once more on um, specifically on anything else that you want to say about your story and about the book. Well, you know, what I'm really excited about the book, that it will encourage uh, people that are in business mm-hmm. or thinking about business, that God really, literally wants to partner with you, that wants to bless you to be a blessing. That, 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 you know, that that's his plan from the very beginning. The very first prayer in Genesis is would bless and multiply mm-hmm. them. And, you know, and there's a covenant, pro- amazing covenant promise in mm-hmm. Uh, Ezekiel 37, where he says, I, you know, I, I'm going to covenant with my people and, and I'm going to multiply you and bless you. And then you're going to, we're, we're going to be in this together, you know, and it's, it's a, you know, um, God's, 
that's what I'm excited about that book, that it will encourage people mm -hmm. that how much God wants to be involved mm -hmm. in, you know, not, you see, a lot of people just think it's just church. No, God wants to be involved yeah. in, in your life and your, uh, and flow through your life, through your business, through your career. Um, and he, you know, that uh, I, I, I've got a lot of quotes and a lot of testimonies from other mm -hmm. business people that impacted me, that encouraged me mm -hmm. all through the book. I've got quotes or, or testimonies that, you know, and that's what I'm excited about the book, that it will literally mm -hmm. encourage uh, people how much God wants to be involved and mm -hmm. wants to partner and co-labor uh, with you through your, you know, whatever you put in your hands to, whatever career it is or whatever, yeah. even, whatever you're going through. Yeah. God wants to be involved. He wants to, you know, you can grab a hold of a promise and literally hold on to it because mm -hmm. that's what, you know, that's what God is. He He is the solution. He is the answer. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Pain. Well, I I want to thank you, Johnny, for encouraging us mm -hmm. and encouraging Mark to get this in writing mm -hmm. because it was a, a process mm -hmm. and that you were always there encouraging, helping, giving advice. Mm -hmm. Um, he can bounce things off of you. Mm -hmm. We we actually talked about the right. title the other. Yeah. It's been really fun. But uh, thank you for your encouragement, because I remember the first time you said, Mark, you have to write a book. <laughs> I mean, that made him take it seriously and not just think, oh, someday I'll just write some of this stuff down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, that he'd been, I, I saw him um, for years collecting ideas, quotes, reading right. books, writing notes, and just like you said. And, and I knew that when you said that, Johnny, that. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I was excited that um, uh, through yeah. your encouragement, well, um, that book is on the table right now. <laughs> no, and, thank you. And what's exciting about this, and why we want um, everyone possible to get one of these books, uh, <laughs> even though they're not available yet. No, no, they, they will they be. Are. By, they will be. They, they will are be. restore seven dot org. Oh, that's right. They are available. I'll talk about that. Okay, you'll talk about that in a minute. It really is, if you can pick up from what we're all saying, it, it really does give you a chance to join into this uh, this partnering with God. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be partnership, mm -hmm. camaraderie. There's joy to it. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think, uh, particularly if you were blessed at all with any of the points you heard so far, this is, this is what this book is full of. And it's a practitioner, again, not knocking any uh, guru or pastor who speaks on it, but it's something about someone who has a lifetime. Uh, we're talking near or more 50 years of, of from the first time you, you get excited with the Lord until now. So this is not like something he's tried five years. This is, they've lived it as a couple. They've faced all the adversities that you can possibly face in 40, 50 years or whatever. And this is, uh, this is what the product is just gold. And so we really want to, I really want to encourage particularly uh, anybody called to business, you'd say the mountain of business. There's so much for it. But as Mark said, the principles really are yeah. for, for they're life. for life. Yeah. They're for life. It's mm -hmm. like no way around That's that. true. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I have a couple things prophetically that are coming to me that I want to share. And when I'm done, um, we're going to have Mark and Pam pray over you guys so one of the things I wanted to say is um, the cover of the book to me is actually really prophetic. Mm. I think that when I, you, you might not be able to tell from here, but it's a beautiful skyline with the mountains in the background and valleys below. And it's these beautiful, colorful, mm. each one so unique, um, hot air balloons. And there's tons of them. You can see them way in the background and some close up. and that just speaks to me of um, a couple of things. One is that each of you, like each of these hot air balloons, are being invited by the Lord up to mm -hmm. have a higher perspective. Mm -hmm. And there's this beautiful green valley below. And green, you know, is connected with the color um, of the mountain of economy and just God's provision in general. And, you know, we all have some connection to the mountain of economy. You got to have a relationship with finances to, to, to live, right? 
but the the green just speaks of what the Lord is inviting us into. And, you know, a hot air balloon, every hot air balloon has a basket and those baskets are actually pretty big and you can have multiple people on them. And, and, and where you're called to, to view from God's perspective up higher, they say the 30,000 foot view or whatever is, is where you can see his tangible provision, not mm. just for yourself, but for others too. Mm. There's something about when, when the Lord, we allow him to stretch us to be able to think beyond ourselves um, is so key. You, you connect to a level of provision and resources, whether it's provision and resources of, you know, mental health, um, being able to speak truth to someone else or practical provision and resources of finances. All of it is connected to how connected we are to the kingdom, which the kingdom culture is thinking about beyond yourselves, you know, thinking not only for your family, but thinking for um, those that your family can impact and what they have modeled for their their children and their children's children and generations to come is so powerful. Like I have no doubt that it's not just a call on Mark and Pam, but it's on their lineage. And that was one of the reasons why we're excited about this book is so that, you know, a book continues to speak yeah. um, when you're sleeping, when you're doing other things and when you're gone. Um, and you're not going anywhere anytime soon, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's, it's powerful. I, I, I feel like, you know, we're not called to publish all of your stories, but many of you have stories yeah. in you. And I want to tell you, if Mark and Pam can do this, you yeah. guys can do this. <laughs> and they never, you know, they have areas of expertise, but it was never to write a book. And, mm -hmm. and, and they said, yes, it was yet another example of just saying, yes, okay, God, let's do this. And he helped y'all do it. But anyway, back to this prophetically, also the hot air balloons, um, there's, they're going somewhere. There's, there's action involved and, and each one is on its own path. Um, and there's this, this dance between the wind and the fire, the flame that is in each one. Um, and so I, I just, I feel like the, even the timing of this book, you know, I don't know when you're seeing this, um, someone you should know episode, but for us, we're getting ready to end the year of 2023 and head into 2024. And um, God's doing something so important in the earth right now, literally related to finances. And, yeah. you know, it's things look pretty bleak right now, but there's something in, I can speak for all of us in our spirits yeah. That is so anticipating the new thing that God is doing um, with kingdom wealth. And a lot of people love to grab hold of this, you know, the, the transfer of the wealth from the wicked to the righteous. So you can do what? So you can help the wicked. How about that? Like, that's pretty intense to think that God would position us to be able to, to ultimately um, the gospel is is the good news that God has a solution, not just for our souls for eternity, but he has a solution for every single thing. So when we're advancing the gospel in practical ways that require finances, um, we're we're basically communicating with someone's heart that God loves them, that 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 he's entrusted the righteous with wealth to communicate to the wicked that there is a way out and that his way is better. Um, so we have to be careful. You know, this, this is such a key time of God wanting to trust his sons and daughters with so much more finances to advance his kingdom, his heart, his, um, his agenda, which is, is all rooted and grounded in love. And so thank you guys for, yeah. for trusting us with this, this book, yeah. this baby that you birthed. <laughs> no, no, thank you for all you've done to help yeah, us in you. the whole process. So, yeah. We, yes, we've got a lot more fun coming up, yeah. ways that we're going to advance this kingdom together. But um, Yeah, you want to so, yeah. pray for, for those who might be watching us uh, specifically um, that the Lord is calling Along the same lines, you know, just whatever words and prayer that you can yeah. mark, uh, mark and Don't know who wants it. to go first, but you can both pray. Yeah. That'd be awesome. But sure. So we just are, um, Lord, we're just so excited that you are still looking for mm. people to anoint, to to bless. 
so that they can be a blessing. You're you're scouring, you're going throughout all the land and looking for those people. And and and, and we just thank you, Lord, that you, you, we know you're going to pour out your spirit. You're you're pouring out your spirit and your anointing, and we just uh, just are so excited that you've always been so faithful to be there when when anyone turns to you and 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 opens up their heart that you're there. You're there to partner with and to co-labor with us to 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 do literally do the impossible mm. to to do things that they wouldn't have even expected that they could ever do that they couldn't do on their own. So, Lord, we just thank you that that it's been your plan from the beginning yeah. to bless and multiply people. And we just thank you that right now you're, you're releasing an increase in that and uh, anointing and opening up uh, people's hearts to just to, 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 to be generous and to be, uh, to be uh, cheerful givers, to just give freely and willingly. And, and Lord, just, a, uh, just thank you for all uh, that you've done, that you, you literally sent your son to give us a, a better covenant with better promises. So mm. you you sent your son to give us a better, a close, intimate relationship where we can literally uh, walk with him and, 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 and go through all, all the different things that come at us through life and, and still be able to bless others. So we just thank you, Lord, thank for you. all yes. your promises and all, all that you've given us. And, and we just thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I just feel like there are people out there that, oh, this couldn't be talking about me. I mean, they're talking about somebody else. I mean, God, you wouldn't want to do that for me. Mm. But I want to let you know that you can't outgive mm. God when you begin to just sow whatever is in your hand and that you give freely with a heart of um, a pure heart, a heart that just wants to give. And that it takes um, faith, like Johnny was saying, too, to do that. But I encourage you, and I feel like there's someone out there named Eric um, that is, you, you're thinking, um, how do I start? What do I do? Is this really, could this really be something God would do for me? Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage you, yes, he could, and he wants to. So just ask him, just like Mark did. He didn't have a clue what the business was going to be for five <laughs> years. But be be patient and ask and be expectant and um, just step out yeah. and begin to just give as you can where you're at uh, with what God you feel like God is telling you to do. So, so good. And that's just for any of you out there that might be in that same situation. Awesome. So, Lord, I just thank you right now. I release faith. Yes. Give the faith, um, even as a mustard seed, to just go forth, increase the faith. And the, and the trust that you are one that is God is calling and looking at to be able to start this process of giving cheerfully. Amen. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we bless you guys. And again, you can, um, until February, mid-February of 2024, you can find this only at restore7.org. After that, you should also be able to find it on Amazon. And if you do, mm -hmm. please be sure to leave a review on Amazon. That helps other people get um, to access know, to access to it, hear about it, and mm -hmm. understand what a great book it is. So mm -hmm. thanks for joining us on Someone You Should Know, and we'll see you next time.